Hey guys, so have you been thinking about maybe starting a channel but you don't know where to begin when it comes to software? Maybe you don't have iMovie or Final Cut Pro but you want to use, did you hear that? That was my bra strap, weird. Um, but you want to use a software that is user friendly and maybe doesn't cost much if not free, then this is the video for you. Um, I've been using DaVinci Resolve for about a year and a half now. I really like it. Um, so I, I thought I'd show you some tips and tricks when it comes to using DaVinci Resolve as a beginner. I'm still constantly learning. Um, there's probably even easier ways of editing videos than the way that I know. I'm more or less self-taught. Um, when I first started, I definitely Googled everything I was trying to do in regards to DaVinci Resolve and um, I went from there. So I thought I'd just like compile a very simple tutorial for the brand new YouTuber that doesn't want to invest in a software but wants a really good free software. So if that is you, feel free to continue watching and give this video a thumbs up and I hope you subscribe to the channel and become just part of the fam here. So um, let's just jump right on in. When I first started, I didn't have iMovie. I I don't. I'm not an Apple user, and I did not have anything with Final Cut Pro pre-installed. So I went on YouTube and I was doing a little bit of re research, and I came across Jack Cole. Um, he breaks it down. Uh, he has a great channel when it comes to different software. He has a great channel all around. I will pop a, a link to his channel down below, but I will also pop a link up top. Um, of the video that I came across that really helped me when I was trying to figure out what software I wanted to use. Now that video is two years old. I'm just using it as reference because that's the one that I used, but I want to say he's already updated it. If you just type in Jack Cole and DaVinci Resolve, a lot of his videos will come up, but he breaks it down step by step. I followed his step by step on how to install DaVinci Resolve into my laptop and the rest was history. So when it I started YouTube. Um, I literally, when I was editing my very first video, it took me hours, like five to six hours. And it was because I had no idea where to begin. So I'm going to be showing you like little clips of at least the basics of DaVinci Resolve. Now it's literally the, the basics of the basics, like barely scratching the surface because that's literally all I know. I know how to do what I'm doing and that's probably about it. I'm still constantly um, Googling or YouTubing DaVinci Resolve hacks or DaVinci Resolve um, tutorials. I do follow a couple of channels that are specific to DaVinci Resolve. I'll also drop their um, their YouTube channels down below. They're great. A lot of their, um, they're very basic in the way they explain things, but because I'm not very tech savvy, some of the terminology they use, I end up having to look it up. I'm just being honest, but, um, overall their channels are amazing and they've really helped when it comes to me editing my own videos. When it comes to starting a channel, you don't need a fancy camera. I have one. I'm not even using it. I'm using my phone. I always find myself going back to my phone, I think, because it's just so convenient. Um, I don't have fancy lighting. I have a ring light, but it's nothing like extremely fancy. And I have a very small tripod. That is literally it. And then DaVinci Resolve. Um, a lot of people, they're really into mics right now. Uh, eventually maybe I'll get a mic, but in DaVinci Resolve you can raise the volume to your video and that's easy enough for me until I consider getting a mic. But um, yeah, let's get started. I'm going to be editing my birthday vlog, so um, I'm going to be uploading my footage to my laptop and then we will be going from there. Okay, if you've made it to this portion of the video, you've already watched how to download DaVinci Resolve to your laptop or your desktop. If you have not watched Jake Cole's tutorial yet, I highly suggest for you to do so. I mean, you definitely can just hang out with us, um, but if you want to follow step by step, definitely have it already downloaded um, onto your device. So I'm using my laptop. I um, am new to this setup, so hopefully you guys can see my screen just fine. Um, so you're going to want to start off, you're going to have two shortcuts that 
are going to pop up to your desktop once you have the software uploaded. You're going to go to the colorful one and we're going to get that open. I am using DaVinci Resolve 16. I do know 17 is already out, but uh, I'm a little bit more familiar with 16 for the, the sake of this video. Um, once you double click your colorful icon here, you're going to pop up with your projects your project screen. Um, this just shows all the projects that you've already worked on and uh, we're going to be creating a new one. So you're going to go ahead and select untitled project here. What I do want to focus on in this video is how to import clips, how to fade in and out between clips so your clips flow nice and aren't choppy, as well as how to add music and maybe some still images or something like that. Just to kind of give you a fill for it without over spraying you with information. Now I am again, just an average Jane figuring out how to edit videos for YouTube. I've been doing YouTube now for a year or so, a year and a half. Um, so if there are easier ways on using DaVinci Resolve and you know of them, feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, but again, I'm just, I kind of am self-taught at this point and so I'm just showing you the easiest way of how to, the how-tos I guess of DaVinci Resolve. Okay, so once you are into your untitled project, right here it says no clips in media pool. Your media pool is going to be your clips, your still images that you're going to be importing to create your YouTube video. All right, so in order to bring in your clips here, we are going to start right up top at file. Go ahead and click that. We're going to go to import file and import media. All right, so I'm going to be working on a birthday vlog, so I'm just going to go ahead and double click that. Now I've already organized my clips in um, numerical order just so that it's easier for me to see and easier for me to create a timeline. Okay. Now the easiest way for me to pull all of my video clips and images over at one time is by hitting control all on my keyboard or control a, I should say control a, it will highlight all of them. I can click open or I can just hit enter. Okay. Now this is my media pool here. This shows all of my clips and being that I've already put them in numerical order, it's going to be very helpful to create that timeline. Now my stills, um, my my images, my pictures that are not videos, I put those in alphabetical order and so they're going to come out down below just so everything's nice and um, not jumbled together. So once I have all of my media pulled into DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to come down here to this icon right here. And that's just going to be where we're going to start creating our timeline, okay? Now, you can kind of customize this however way you want. There are plenty of videos um, that you can research on YouTube on customizing this screen here. I kind of left it as is. Um, I just, I like to have my media poll right here. Um, my timeline down below. Now, you can adjust this a bit if you want, just so you can kind of see what you're working with. And whatnot okay so I'm gonna go ahead and start off by dragging a clip to my timeline down below okay now there's two ways that you can do this you can grab your clip drop it right in or you can kind of hover right here over this screen this is gonna be where you're gonna be able to see what you're working with it's gonna have it nice and large here and you can just go to insert and it will bring it to your screen um it'll bring it to your screen but it's going to already create your timeline okay so we've dragged in our first clip you're going to see that our video is in blue and our audio is in green really nice to kind of help keep them separate this red dial right here uh, just shows you where you're at in your project so being that we inserted our very first clip our red dial is automatically at the very end of that clip. Now this dial here also matches this white dial here. So if I want to drag this all the way to the beginning, I can just grab my pointer and just drag this over this way, okay? Now, when using or working with your audio, I did not use a mic for this, I used my phone. Um, you definitely can use an external mic for a phone. You can buy one off of Amazon. If you want to adjust your volume, just do it right here. You just, there's a very thin line. I'm not sure if my camera is 
picking it up. Um, you can adjust your volume right here and you can also lower it if you want. If I wanted to add music and didn't want my own voice over it, I'll just drag it all the way down. Okay. So let's say I want to drag it up a bit. If you want it to the sound of the original audio, it's going to just be set to zero. There we go. Let's say I want it just slightly elevated at 1.53. I personally, if I elevate this to 1.53, I try to keep all of my audio the same across the board. Okay, so let's say being that you're new to DaVinci, um, you're you're not going to be able to remember that. Let's just say there's a few different keys up here that you're going to want to familiarize yourself with. I don't use them all. I, I don't even know what some of them do yet. Um, so this right here is your pointer cursor. This one right here is your your blade to slice your clips. Um, and then this one here, you have your bookmark and a marker. Okay, so if you want to make a note to yourself, I suggest creating a marker. And you should be able to see your marker on your timeline. Um, let's see, here's our marker here. You can um, rename this. I usually do create markers note to self with any information. So if for this one, if I want to put that I've upped my volume to 1.53, Right, 1.53, just making sure. Yes, 1.53, just so that I have a note to myself and I don't always have to check my very first audio. If I'm hoping I make sense, I'm, I'm hoping that um, I'm getting my point across without being over, I can't even talk. I hope I'm getting my point across without over explaining. There we go. Okay, now here, in these clips here, you definitely can adjust the way these look a bit. The best way to do that, I found, is using the timeline, oops, sorry, timeline view options. You just click that. You have your video view here, your audio view here, and then if you want to just like make it enlarged a bit, you definitely can do that here, or even your audio, you can do that here, okay? Now, you could also adjust this right here. Just kind of gives you different options, three different options here, just to kind of view your clips. I tend to work out of this middle one. That's just my personal preference. That's what I'm used to. Okay, so we have our very first clip to our timeline. Now let's go ahead and add our second clip to our timeline. So wherever your dial is, that is where you're gonna be inserting your clip. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and drag this back towards the end. Now, there is probably an easier way to get in between clips. If you know how to do that, let me know. If not, I will figure it out and maybe I'll do another video on it. Oops, sorry. Okay, so this is where our first clip ended. My second clip is here okay so I'm gonna do the same exact thing I can drag it right here or I can hover over my screen and hit insert now again it's going to drag this cursor here to the very end of the clip okay just keep that in mind so I'm gonna go ahead and go in between my clips here there we go So being that I elevated the volume or the audio in my very first clip, it's going to show up as slightly darker green. So I'm going to do the same. And I remember just off the top of my head because that's my normal 1.53. I'm going to elevate it because I want it to match. Okay. So transitioning between clips, I'm going to show you the very end of this clip going into this clip if we left it just like this. You see how it was very choppy? Um, I wasn't really talking much there, but it just, it transitioned from one thing to the next, but it was a little bit choppy. So to avoid 
from one clip to the next being so choppy, I'm going to create a slight transition. Now, what I really like about DaVinci Resolve is you don't have to drag in some sort of transition. You can do a very simple one right here within your video clip. So at the very end of my clip one, I have this small little white dot here. I'm not even sure if the technical name for this. I am so sorry. If you know the technical name, feel free to drop it down below. Um, I accidentally figured this out while I was editing my very first YouTube video and I was so thankful for it because I feel like it really does um, create a nice transition. So I just dragged this over. So I'm going to do it at 0. Point f I'm sorry. I always add a, a point in there. 0, 05. Okay, now the beginning of my next clip for clip two, it also has the same white dot and I'm going to just match that to zero 05 or 05. Okay, so it's going to create like this dark shadowy V on my timeline. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what that looks like from transitioning from one clip to the next with this V kind of created in there. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play. You see how it gave you that nice little pause in between each clip? I personally like that. I feel like it's, uh, it looks a little bit more put together versus just jumping right into the next clip. Okay? So, so far we've learned how to import our media, created a media poll. We've learned how to adjust our volume and we've learned how to do transitions. So let's go ahead and also show you how to make a cut. Okay? I'm just going to drag this actually to the very beginning. I'm going to use my dial up top. Now, I personally know that this is going to be my very first clip in my next YouTube video, but I kind of rambled in the beginning. Um, note to self, just in case I didn't mention it, always make sure your volume is up fully so you get kind of a true sound of what your YouTube video is going to be sounding like. Um, I, for the sake of not having my laptop blaring at you my volumes at 60 right now um but just a heads up make sure when you're editing your video you're in full volume so i'm going to go ahead and hit play but i know i'm going to be chopping a piece of this front part area off but let's, let's go ahead and i'll just show you how to do that last time i promise so i'm going to be okay so i want kind of i'm sorry it was kind yeah. of quick but i want my video to start off when I am saying so, okay? Now this red dial is nice because you can kind of drag it slowly and kind of get it right where you want it. So I, I, was... so I can see that's about where I start saying so. And then I can see within the audio that that's where my next word kind of is starting just because it shows like an audio sound wave there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and remove th um, this piece of my audio, I'm sorry, this piece of my video and this piece of my audio. The way I do that is changing from my pointer to my blade. Now I'm ready to start slicing, okay? Sorry, it didn't show my blade until I'm actually over my video. So I'm going to line this up right with my red cursor and then I'm going to do the same thing also over my audio okay then I'm going to quickly jump back to my pointer cursor and I'm going to select my video portion there's two ways that you can do this you can right click and you can hit delete selected for some reason when I do ripple delete it does not work there's probably something that I need to tweak within my settings I just still need to figure it out when I hit ripple delete it messes up my whole video. So just for me to keep it safe, I always do delete select, which I can click here, or it's showing me that my shortcut is actually backspace. So I have this highlighted. I'm gonna go ahead and hit my backspace button. And then anything that I do here for my video, I'm also gonna wanna make sure I'm doing it for my audio so that my audio matches. If for any reason I didn't do this and I dragged all of my video over, my video is not going to match my audio anymore because I forgot to remove this. So it's very important that you also remember to remove the audio portion. So I have it highlighted. It's in red. I'm going to go ahead and hit backspace. Now I'm going to go ahead and click on this gray piece here, this blank space. It's going to create a gray 
when I click on it, it creates like a gray bubble or some sort. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit right click once it's gray and I'm going to go ahead and select ripple delete now. And I'm going to do the same down below. Okay. Now, kind of like what I did in between clips, I can also start off with a little bit of a fade here just so it's not so abruptly starting. I'm probably going to have some sort of um, intro. I just, I need to create it. Um, I, I forgot to create an intro, but I'll, I'll do that later. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like now with that fade in. So I'm going to be compiling. It's just a gentle fade in. Now I could also fade in my, my voice as well. Your voice also has, um, or the audio has the option of fading in and out. So I'm going to be compiling clips. I know it's just this one little area. It's not giving a true um, fade in and fade out example. So let's go ahead and add a clip of music so that I can show you a little bit of a fade in, fade out type situation. Okay, so for adding music, music is just like your clips off to the side. It's going to be considered a media, or more or less, or an audio. Okay, so... Um, if you haven't already, get familiar with your audio library options within YouTube Studio. In your back um, channel dashboard, um, you'll find it off to the left right here at audio library. Now, my lovely channel has been up and going for a year and a half and I am at 75 subscribers. I know partially it's on me because I haven't been very consistent here, but I would love for you to join the fam here. So if you would like to help me reach my first hundred, please feel free to hit that subscribe button. But anywho, you're just gonna go here and select audio library. And here's where you'll find your music, your sound effects, and uh, just, things that you would like to add to your YouTube video just to make it a little bit more unique and more you. Okay, so I've already saved some of my more used um, music um, that I use often. I have it saved to my desktop actually. I have a folder, which I do suggest if you're gonna constantly be using specific things, just create a folder for it just so it's easier to find. And then I have a folder in here for my music. So I already know um, for this particular video that I'm just going to use puppy love just for the tutorial portion. So just like our, um, media pool, sorry, going to come back here. I'm going to start off by going to file. I'm going to go to import file. I'm going to go to import media. Now my folder is on my desktop and it's under my sounds, music, and buttons folder. I'm gonna go ahead and go here, go to my music, and I'm gonna find the song that I want, Puppy Love. Okay, now I know I want to add it here to uh, this portion of my timeline. Now originally, just to kind of give you an idea of making sure my audio matches at that 1.53, I went on ahead and um, changed my audio for my second clip to 1.53. But technically, I already know that I'm going to be muting this and adding music. So I'm gonna drag this bar all the way down and it will eliminate the sound from my clip too, okay? Now, I can keep some background noise if I wanted to, but just me personally, I don't. If I wanted to, I would just maybe lower it a bit just so I could hear that background noise but still hear my music. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just drag Puppy Love, it populated into my media pool, right down below, and I'm going to go ahead and hit play. Okay, so just to give you a little bit more of a, a better, um, I don't want to say visual, because it's more like a hearing thing, not I mean, it's partially visual. Okay. Um, just to give you a better idea of how to fade in and fade out music, I'm going to go ahead and slice this, which we've already seen. I'm going to just, I went from my pointer cursor to my blade. It populates as a little blade. Um, I'm going to slice this. Now I only need to slice my music because my video up top, I don't want to slice that. Okay. Go back to my pointer highlight the portion that I'm removing and hit backspace. 
I'm going to highlight this portion. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not highlighting this portion again. I am actually just grabbing this and sliding it where I want it. If I highlighted that, it would have dragged it all the way to the beginning of my video, and that's not what I wanted. Sorry about that. I'm going to go back to my dial here just so it starts at the beginning of my second clip. Now, to get a true fade in of the music, it is quite loud. I'm very sorry, but I just want to make sure you can kind of hear that fade in. I'm going to put it at 23. Sorry, let's go ahead and... You see how it kind of faded in? Now you can even do a little bit more of a deeper fade in. You see that we have a little bit of a, I don't want to call it, what do I want to call this? Just like a point. Um, it's a little cir a white circle here. You can kind of drag this and it will kind of make that fade dip in even more. So let's see what that sounds like. You see how it just has a more truer fade in? I kind of like that. Um, so that's just an option for you to use if you want to fade in music. Let's say I wanted to add a picture off to the left side of my screen. Okay, I'm going to find a photo that I want to add. Let's say I wanted to add this picture here. I'm going to go ahead and I can drag this picture. I'm going to create a new timeline right above my current timeline. So for this one, there's probably a way to use the buttons that pop up off to the side, but I personally, this is the best way for me and um, without messing up my, my work. Okay, so I'm just going to create a new timeline right above my timeline, just like that, okay? Now I can click on this, just kidding, I can click on this right here. And it's going to allow me to adjust the photo, the size of it, right onto my screen. And it allows me to kind of drag it where I want it. So I want it right off to this side right here. Okay. Now, just like our video clips, we can also fade in still images. And I'll show you how to do that. So I'm just going to drag my still image because if I leave it up here going across my clip one and clip two, it's going to stay here. I'll show you what I mean. You see how it stayed there? I don't want that. I want it to, maybe I want it to stop right here at the very end of clip one. So we're going to just drag that on over so that it stays there. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, you see how it, um, it disappeared once we hit clip two, okay? Now, just for the purpose of this video, I'm gonna just drag this a little bit longer so I can show you a fade in of a still image. Okay, so let's say I wanted this one photo to fade in and fade out, okay? I'm gonna go ahead, I just dragged my cursor back a little bit so it will show the fade in and fade out. I'm gonna go ahead and hit play, my play button right here. This began and last again. You see how it faded in and then faded back out. My fade ins were kind of drastic. I can make it a little bit shorter. But I just wanted to give you an idea that you can definitely add a still image, fade it in, fade it out, and all that fun jazz. From this began and last again. And then if I want to reposition it or I felt like there was a slight gap there, just slide it on over. If I wanted to enlarge it, I definitely can. Okay. There we go. So one thing I, f I failed to mention that you should always, always do right when you start is save your project. Easiest way to do it is just hitting control S. I'm going to just title this BV for birthday vlog. Save. I constantly am hitting control S while I'm in the middle of my edits. I have unfortunately created a whole vlog and I forgot to save it and then I click out of the program and I lose everything. So constantly make sure you're saving your project, even if you aren't fully done. Okay, so just to kind of 
give another rundown of what we've learned so far. We've created our media pool. We've created timelines. I showed you how to create more than one timeline by adding a still image as well as adding additional audio such as music. We've sliced our timeline and we've also done some transitioning where we fade timelines in and out, still photos as well as audio. Um, the last thing, let's say I was completely done with my my video. I'm obviously not, but for this video, I'm going to pretend I am. Let's say I'm ready to go ahead and get it ready for an actual YouTube video. I'm going to go ahead and come down here to deliver. Now, one thing to keep in mind, being that we're adding a lot of different things to a timeline, it can show up as almost being a little choppy. It's not going to show up in your video as being choppy. It just needs time to kind of piece everything together. Pro oh, sorry. Properly. I'm not looking at my keyboard. So we're going to go to the little um, rocket here. Oh, I should have edited my sound so that it would have ended up my next clip. Um, you're going to want to make sure when you're getting ready to render your clips that you select YouTube. Okay. I personally, I just leave this more or less the way that it is um, set up. It's set to format in QuickTime. I personally don't see much of a difference if I change this. There are videos. Um, you can change it to an MP4 if you want. I just leave it set to QuickTime. Before I do this, let me actually just edit this sound real quick so that I don't have like an extensive sorry let me just cut this so that it actually ends my video there delete selected fade that control save okay go back I'm going back to my little rocket which it it's titled deliver I made sure I am set to I'm sorry I didn't even see if you could see that um, I am set right here to YouTube. There's different um, presets already, already up here, but I just have it set to YouTube so that once my video is saved and downloaded, it's ready for YouTube. So I just changed this. I'll just name it BV for now. I always save everything to my desktop save so it's showing me that I've updated the file name I have a location for my file okay and then I'm going to add to render queue all right once it's added to oh sorry let me use this hand once it's added to my render queue it's going to show my timeline BV timeline and it's set for YouTube formatting I'm going to go ahead and hit start render right here And it's just going to smooth everything over and get it formatted and all that fun jazz. It's just showing you here. So I'll show you what it looks like once it's on my home screen. Okay, my render is complete. It shows that it's completed. So I'm just going to minimize my screen here and it's going to show my video on my home screen. It's right there. I'm just going to double click it. So I'm going to be compiling clips from this birthday trip um, in Scotts Valley as well as okay so my video is obviously not done this was just a little trial video just to show you some very simple um, tricks and tips with DaVinci Resolve um, the quality is not bad I did this on my front facing camera so I've already mentioned it you don't need the latest technology just to get started and I've already like I said I've been doing YouTube for a year and a half yeah I don't have the largest following but I mean I, I did find a camera um, that I really like using but my phone does the job and I tend to keep going back to my phone so um, if you're trying to get started don't worry about the equipment as much as just dive in and do it so once you have your video you just go to your YouTube studio, you hit create, upload video, and just drag your video 
drag it from here to here. I was just chilling on my floor doing this video, but I wanted to give an official outro. I do look super busted and crusted. But if you guys like this type of video for like the average person trying to figure out how to... Oh my god, my phone's about to die. Sorry, my phone's usually charged if I'm going to vlog on it and I did not do that because I wasn't expecting to do this video. But if this is something that you guys enjoyed, if somebody finds this helpful, let me know in the comments. Even if it's just one person, I will totally make more of these. Um, again, it's just for the average person who's trying to figure out how to create a YouTube video. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions, drop them down below. If you are way more advanced than me in DaVinci and there are some tips and tricks that you would like to leave, drop them in the comments. But I hope you guys like this video and I hope to see you in my next video and I will see you then. Bye!